So uh, underlying earnings for the half compared to the prior, uh, PCP prior comparable period was 454 million. It was flat. Dividends were up 5%, um, and that seemed to be a surprise to a number of people who don't realise if you've got a buyback, running it reduces the denominator. Um, and then with the uh, uh, um, forecast for uh, guidance for the full year was raised from an 830 to 880 million to 870 to 910 million dollars. That includes a one-off that we uh, saw coming through from a successful court action uh, on a tariff argument that's been going for years, uh, referred to as WIRP, W-I-R-P, it's to do with Wiggins Island uh, in central Queensland. Um, and then that, uh, also with that um, legal case, there's a $11 million regular earning coming through uh, every year through to 2035, so very uh, successful court case, um, um, that one. As far as uh, how the business has gone that's underlying all that, um, I'll start with uh, coal. Uh, the coal business and the uh, the overall coal business and the network business, which has uh, a large amount of metallurgical coal running on it in central Queensland. Um, the story is basically, it's uh, from an operational point of view, COVID had extraordinarily little impact at all, other than people learning to wash their hands regularly and a bit of social distancing. There wasn't very much else that actually happened. We, we had to do a, a bit, but um, it didn't have any really uh, big impacts. The impacts was more from a market point of view, and that's the end customer, so the international customers for coal. Uh, what you saw from April through to towards the end of the year was the COVID-related impact. That's kind of largely uh, gone away now. What we saw coming in towards the end of the year was uh, previously mentioned was uh, the impact of the China-Australia tra China trade issues. Um, and we've seen that um, have a pretty big impact in the December quarter. There was about uh, 18 million tonnes that should have found a home in China. Um, and what we have been seeing though over the months now is uh, more of our customers placing that coal in other parts of the world uh, where it's successfully competitive. So actually in December itself, uh, 18 million tonnes should have found a home in China, 10 million tonnes found a home somewhere else in the world. It's not an instantaneous process as the customers chase markets um, in different parts of the world, but that is becoming less and less uh, of an issue uh, over time. Um, then, and that affects both coal and our network business. So going forward, um, uh, maintaining, um, raising the uh, uh, forecast uh, for guidance uh, for the year uh, 870 to 910 on the back of that. A bit about bulk, bulk didn't have any issues through that entire period uh, at all. Um, big demands for a lot of products, including of course, we've all heard the iron ore story and we do uh, have uh, some involvement in iron ore in uh, Western Australia, but all the other products, copper, um, uh, uh, even our um, um, uh, agricultural business was doing okay, although it's very small uh, by comparison to anything else. The drought did have a little bit of impact on, uh, on livestock activity in Queensland. Um, from a long-term coal, which I often get asked about, uh, the, the, there's an interesting uh, uh, bit of information that I, uh, that I share just to kind of place it against all the, the newspaper stories <coughs> you heard. Um, if you look at the last three years, there's uh, 61 gigawatts of coal-fired power around, around the world has been retired, so it's gone out, okay? For, e for every gigawatt of those 61 that was retired, 1.7 gigawatts was actually built. If you look at where the, giga the retirements occur, so more coal-fired has been built around the world than was actually retired. Where you look where the retirements occurred, 90% of all those retirements were in North America and Europe. 90% of the new bills were in Asia which is, for Horizons, where 98% of Australian coal actually goes to. So um, I, I'm absolutely, like I imagine everyone in the room, convinced that it, uh, the climate change impact story on coal uh, will continue to get stronger over time, but it's, it's still something that we're actually seeing uh, coal-fired being uh, powered stations being built. Our business plan relies on um, uh, no further builds. Actually, for several years we've been getting it wrong. Uh, we just look at what is built will actually uh, continue the end of its economic life. The reality is power stations, unlike in Australia where they're in their mid to late 30s or early 40s for how long, how long they've been operating for, the average uh, length of a power station life is 13 years in Asia at the moment. So there's um, easily 20 years of, uh, 20 to 30 years of uh, still operating uh, capability and that's just for thermal power. I won't get into the uh, metallurgical coal story because that takes a, a lot longer to discuss as well. Um, the, um, the other thing I'd say about bulk, the bulk business, 
um, is four years ago that was losing that bundle of contracts that makes up the bulk business because it, it didn't actually have a business wrap around those contracts. I, I created that four years ago. Um, it was losing $14 million. Uh, we're, we're forecasting over $100 million uh, profit uh, for, the, for this year or earnings for this year. And um, that's on the back of great customer focus, um, relentless cost reduction and actually uh, expanding our, our customer base. Uh, we see that uh, that profit pool that we can push uh, through uh, our bulk business through uh, has actually got larger as we've been looking at it um, and developing our understanding of the business um, over the last four years. So um, a rise in, in a very good uh, place despite COVID and actually the China trade issues continuing to sail through it. That's mm -hmm. what the numbers uh, indicate and still with a good uh, multi-decade future in front of us. And that's all for a 7% yield.